Hallelujah. Would you stand to your feet tonight? Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Has God been good to you? Father God, we love you. We bless your name. You're such an awesome God. Come on, tell him how good he is tonight. Lord, we just magnify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for coming in and dwelling in this place, meeting with us here. Lord, we just love you. I, th I thank you for, Lord, the word this morning that encouraged us to live a life of obedience. I thank you, Lord God, that you're moving in this house and in this people. And I pray, Lord, that you'll just equip us tonight to be a light in a dark place. Lord, when, uh, when the enemy comes in, your word says that like a flood, you're going to raise up a standard against him by the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, come in and raise up a standard in this house is my prayer. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. Every chain, break every chain. 
child of God tonight.
Just lift their hands and sing that from the bottom of their heart. My heart is yours. Yes, my heart is yours. And my heart is yours. Yes.
Sure. 
presence Jesus Sing that one more time Oh surely the presence of the Lord is in this place Oh I can feel his mighty power Just close your eyes and let's just acknowledge his presence here right now. Just the word says where two of us, two or three are gathered in my name, he said. Surely, Lord, your presence. Sing it out loud. Surely. Surely. Come on, lift your voice. Presence your presence is here, Master. Thank you, Lord. Is in this place. <laughs> I can feel the mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of the angel's wings. I see glory.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. to tag on to that. And I exalt thee. Come on, just lift him up. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Come on, come on, sing it. I exalt Oh, we lift you up, Lord. We lift you up. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh, hallelujah. Father God, let our lives be, Lord, a reflection of your goodness and your grace. Lord, let our lives be a reflection of the presence of the Most High living on the inside of us. Let us be that portable Ark of the Covenant. Lord, we carry your word. We carry your presence everywhere we go. Now, Master, I just thank you for this house. I thank you, Lord, that we put a premium on, Lord, just honoring and celebrating your presence. And I ask you, Jesus, just to come in and meet with us here tonight. Lord, teach us in your word. Teach us tonight, Holy Spirit. Talk through me, Lord. Your word's already anointed. It doesn't need my help. But, Lord, I need your help. So anoint me tonight to declare the gospel of Jesus in this house, in this place. Because that gospel, that good news is the power of God to salvation. I thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a big clap offering. Turn that AC down a little bit. I'm hot up here. I'm nervous. I hadn't preached in a while. <laughs> Amen. Let me let the stirrups out a little bit, make sure they fit. Amen. Good evening, guys. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? So, you know, we're coming into uh, uh, Thanksgiving, right? And we've got, <clears throat> we've got announcements. Don't forget next Sunday, Bishop's going to be with us. You, uh, you don't want to miss this service. Amen. Uh, God is, God is good. He, he called, he said, I got a couple of dates and, uh, he, he had this Sunday. I'm like, no, I don't know if I'm going to be back this Sunday or not. I said, uh, I said, let's make it pastor appreciation day. So let's come prepared to, to honor and bless our Bishop. Amen. <clears throat> and, uh, so he'll be speaking Sunday morning. We will not have Sunday night service next week. Y'all, uh, y'all, y'all have mercy on me, even though I just got back from two weeks of vacation. <clears throat> Amen. I want to talk to you tonight. So we, we coming into Thanksgiving, but there's this hurdle before we get to Thanksgiving every year, right? And, and, and what is the hurdle? Thank you. Thank you. Right. It's, it's every, you know, it, it, this has been something ever since we got saved. Me and my wife got, you know, I wasn't raised in church, and so I didn't, I didn't carry a lot of the baggage. Some of y'all did. But uh, I was raised a devout heathen, and I celebrated Halloween the way it's supposed to be celebrated. Amen. With the dark arts, <clears throat> right? I was into that stuff. I believed in a literal devil before I ever believed in a literal God. <clears throat> don't ask me how that works. <laughs> I don't know why well, I never thought that there could be a God when I, I knew, I guess I knew he was out there. I didn't really give him much thought, but, um, you know, it's, and so when we got born again and we came out of that mess, uh, you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't celebrate the, the hollow shell, you know, oh, well, it's just fun. It's just make believe. Well, no, it wasn't for me. Come on y'all. Right. It, it's real. And if you don't understand the reality of the dark side, then, then yeah, you look at, at Halloween as it's just, it's just a bunch of fun and games for kids, but it's not. And God 
takes this very, very literally, and he speaks about it throughout his word, right? And we're going to dig into that tonight, and we're going to kind of come back and touch what I preached a few couple of years ago on the outer limits <clears throat> to remind us all of who we are, amen? I'm glad I'm the head and not the tail tonight. Come on, church. We're, we're not victims in this world, and we're not being drug around by the ear. We are the thermostat. Amen. We set the spiritual climate wherever we go. Come on. He, greater is he that lives on the inside of me than he that lives in the world. And we have to understand that. So I'm going to title this Demon, Ghost, Spirits, and the People of God. Amen. <clears throat> and I started off saying God's people have tolerated the enemy's encroachment upon our families, churches, cities, and nations for far too long. You know, chur uh, churches all throughout the, you know, this world is going to celebrate Halloween. They'll, they'll call it something different, but they're going to acknowledge it and celebrate it. As a, I, I, I may do again what I did last time uh, a couple years ago. Uh, we had hell night here on Wednesday night. <laughs> Amen. I had a hell box up here, and I preached on hell on Halloween because that's the, that's the literal reality of it. This upcoming dark season called Halloween has been a snare that the enemy uses to put God's people in a place of opposition to God and prevents us from advancing his kingdom, God's kingdom, and we've tolerated it for too long. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So tonight I want to just kind of give you Bible. I want to help you to understand that, you know, where, where God is in the midst of all of this. Amen. If we don't understand our place in the kingdom, we will never accomplish our mission on this earth because we'll be living far beneath the privilege as God's dear children. Let me tell you something. You are not a victim here tonight. Come on, somebody. Talk to me. You are the people of God. If you're here tonight and you're saved, you're born again, you're filled with the Spirit, you are no victim, amen, other than to your own uh, uh, insecurities and your own uh, lack of understanding and lack of applying the Word of God. Amen. God's, God's got better things for us. Amen. So I, I want to I educate you tonight. Uh, <clears throat> necromancy. How many of y'all have heard of that word? Ne what is necromancy? Bringing the dead back. Talk, consulting the dead. Here's, here's what, uh, I think this is wiki, Wikipedia. You know, they're the smartest people on the internet out there. Necromancy is the practice of magic involving communication with the dead by summoning their spirits as apparitions or visions for the purpose of divination, divination, you know, figuring out the, the future there, imparting the means to foretell future events and discover hidden knowledge. Sometimes it's characterized under death magic. The term is also is occasionally used in a more general sense to refer to black magic or witchcraft as a whole. Now, that, that's, that's what Wiki says. Let's see what the Word of God says. Luke, uh, I'm sorry, Leviticus, guys, if you'll put this up there. And New King James will work, if you will. <clears throat> Leviticus 19.31. Look what he says. Do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out, and so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. What does that say? Don't. <laughs> Don't get involved because that will make you unclean. That will set you in opposition to God. Now, I, I'm, I don't raise your hands, but how many of you have gone to fortune tellers at the fair or something and you maybe uh, dabbled with Ouija boards when you were a kid, right? I won't even tell you what the Ouija board told me because I'm not going to give voice to it, but we did all that when I was a kid, right? We, we tapped into that stuff. And listen to me, there is a reality there. We're going to see that in Scripture, right? <laughs> you know, it's just everything. Let, listen to you. The, the, the enemy's means of, of deceiving people, he deceives you by imitation, right? He imitates what is real. Amen. He's got no substance, no form. The devil cannot create. Amen. He imitates. Say imitates. And so the devil's got a false tongue. He's got false prophets. All through Scripture talks about false prophets, right? There's always that. You've got to understand that. It's always out there. The people of God have got to understand God's called us to a higher place, a higher cause. We've got higher knowledge. It's like, I just want to know, you know, the, dark, the deep things of, uh, uh, of God. Well, then you need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on. He knows, the, he knows what's in the mind of God. Come on. 
because he is God. So it says, don't turn to them. Don't seek them out. If you do, it makes you unclean. Leviticus 20, verse 6. If a person turns to mediums, necromancers, whoring after them, I will set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. Is God playing with this? Why? Think about this just for a minute. Why? Why does God not want his people dabbling in the dark arts? It's evil. Everything in Scripture that God rejects, it's because of an unholy mixture. Come on. And, and he, wants, he wants it to make, he wants everybody in, in that world and in this world to know that when we speak for God, we're speaking from his spirit, not a combination. There's a lot of witchcraft going on in the church today. Come on. Boy, I got like them amens. Woo. <clears throat> I'm telling you. That there are folks out there operating in quote unquote gifts that don't come from God. That's why you and I must be filled with the Spirit and, and, and ask for, seek for the gift of discerning of spirits so that we can determine what is from God and what is not. John said it in, in 1 John. He said, We've got, We have an anointing from the Holy One. Boy, it's going to be a fun one tonight. Y'all are tough. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 18, Deuteronomy 18, verse 9. When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you will not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughters as an offering, anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens, a sorcerer, a charmer, or a medium, or a necromancer, or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out from before you. So what happens is when people get into this, when a nation is given to this, God drives that nation out from the advancing of God's people. Come on, that's, that right there is grounds to shout. Come on. That, you know, I know Christians that are scared to death of, of demon-possessed people. They're, they're freaked out. I'm like, hey, the Bible says that God's going to drive them out from before us. Come on, church. You've got to understand. You've got to get, get that foot out of, the, uh, out of that camp and get it over in God's side. Amen? <clears throat> Isaiah 8, 19. And when they say to you, inquire of the mediums and the necromancers who chirp and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? What is he saying? He's like, you know, here I am. Now, why would people turn to this as opposed to turning to God? Come on, we'll act like this is Wednesday night. Give me a little feedback. Why people go to the dark arts instead of going to the living God? Say that again. More glamorous. Can't be obedient. <laughs> That's from this morning. Yeah. Say again. Because everybody's doing it. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, we, we make fun of it. We, we make it like it's nothing. And, but folks, God's not ambivalent about his opinion about this stuff. He's very clear in his word. Uh-uh. My people will not participate in this. Hello. It's very, very, very clear. There's, there's no discerning. There's no interpreting needed here. God is saying it very, very clear. And what he's doing, he's saying people are going to this as opposed to coming to me for answers. Why don't we turn to God? Because when we take, take God our questions about half the time, he says, okay, set that over here. Let's talk about you. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> let's let's get you right then we'll get answers come on you see the the the, the you know the the witch the, the fortune teller the witches they're not going to ask you about all that stuff they're going to tell you what you want to hear right uh, <clears throat> all right there's uh let me see where 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 am i at did i miss one da, da, da. Man. Oh, there it is. Okay, we're coming to it. We're coming to it. All right. 
I, I got a couple of New Testament verses, lest you say, well, that's just Old Testament. 1 Timothy 4.1, 1 Timothy 4.1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith. They will do what? They'll depart from what? They'll depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Right? Same stuff. 1 John 4.1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. In Ephesians 5.11, Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. And that's what we're going to do tonight. Come on. <clears throat> we're not going to take part in this. We're going to expose the lies of the enemy, the convincing churches all throughout this nation. This is just fun and games. It's not fun and games. And by doing so, by participating in it, you open doors to demons. Come on. You give the enemy permission to come in and to cause you to become deaf and blind and mute. You can't hear God, therefore you can't see God working, therefore you can't speak for him. And folks, God's called you to be a prophet. I'm not, I'm not saying he's called you to the office of a prophet, but he has called the church to be a prophet. We are to speak for God in this land, not to just talk about him. We're to have a message to this world out here that's wringing their hands, worried about an election. Let me tell you something. I, I heard just a little brief thing uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it lit me up. <clears throat> it said this, that uh, uh, you know people are all fretting about the election, the election, and folks, we're praying for the election, amen. We're doing our part. But let me tell you something. It doesn't matter who's in the White House. God's still on the throne. Come on. It doesn't matter what's going on in this nation. The plan and the purpose of God and his church is undeterred. Are you hearing me tonight? It does not matter. And when you put your faith in a government, that government is a broken cistern. Jeremiah talked about, you've turned from me, the fountain of living waters, and you've turned to cisterns, even broken cisterns that can hold no water. So we got to get off of that. We've got to get our faith and our hope on the promise of God and understand it doesn't matter. Amen. They can put, they can put Adolf Hitler up there, which they're not near there now. But <laughs> come on, you know I can't stay off that. It doesn't matter. We are still, come on, we're still the, the, the leaders of the spirit. We're, we're still the spiritual government. Come on, you can have whatever earthly government you want. We are the spiritual government here. We're the light. Amen. <clears throat> All right. When we turn to other sources, what, why would someone go to a, a, a necromancer? Why would they do it? Well, let's look about somebody and see why they did that. First Samuel 28. If you have your Bible, you can turn there. First Samuel 28, they'll put it up here, verse 3. <clears throat> Man, I can't hardly catch my breath here today. Now Samuel had died. Samuel was the prophet, man of God. And all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in Ramah, his own city. And Saul had put the mediums and the necromancers out of the land. So the Philistines assembled and came and encamped at Shunem, and Saul gathered all of Israel, and they encamped at, at Gilboa. When Saul saw that the army of the Philistine, the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. Underline that. You need to understand. Saul is stressed. Any, any of you get stressed out? How many are dealing with stress right now? Amen. Good. Good. That's awesome. That's awesome. You're in a good place tonight. Amen. Because when you're dealing with stress, this is where you need to come. You need to come where the word of God is preached. You need to come where the spirit of God is active. Because, folks, God will talk to you. I said God will talk to you. But Saul's heart was deceptive. He was a, he was a wishy washy man. James would say he's a double-minded man. And he couldn't, he couldn't take a stand for God because he was worried about what everybody else thought about him. Here he is. He's got an enemy. His, he'd always go to the preacher for answers. Y'all not shouting with me tonight. He'd always go to the preacher for answers, but the preacher's dead. Now what's he going to do? He was afraid. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim or by prophets. 
Why didn't God answer him? Well, you go back. This is the 28th verse, uh, chapter. You go back to the 15th chapter, you'll find out that God rejected him and the Spirit of God departed from him. And an evil spirit, the Bible says that evil spirit from the Lord came upon him. He, he, God wasn't going to talk to him. Let me tell you something. You can get to the place where God will go silent. And what do we do when that happens? What is a man or woman to do when they pray and God doesn't answer? Right here's the answer, friend. You come to a place of prayer. You get on your knees and you repent. <clears throat> Are you listening to me? 99% of the modern church doesn't preach repentance. They just preach God loves you. God does love you. But sometimes he'll go silent because of your sin. And when that happens, you need to get on your face and cry out and purge your life. Oh, God, talk to me. Amen. Be that, let that Jacob spirit get a hold. I'm not going to let go till you bless me. Saul wasn't like that. If, if things didn't go just right, because he, he's so worried about what people are going to say or do. And so <clears throat> he's facing this army. He sought God. God didn't answer. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek out for me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said, Behold, there's a medium or a witch at Endor. <clears throat> I'll tell you the rest of the story. He goes to her. Uh, he, he didn't dress like Saul. He went, uh, he went to her just as a in, in, in incognito. And she begins to, to, to pray. He said, he wanted, she said, I see a man coming out of the, out of the desert. And, and he says, it's, it's Samuel. It's Samuel. And Samuel came and talked to him. Did he? Was it Samuel? There are a lot of Christians that believe that the witch called Samuel back in Samuel. Talk. The, the spirit told Saul the truth. Surely it was Samuel. No. Th th this is where I get a lot of people upset at me. That's why I wouldn't preach this on a Sunday morning and half the crowd get mad. <laughs> Because half the church believes that there ain't Betty Lou became their guardian angel. Or, or, that, or that, you know, mama died and mama, mama come talks to me every night and she tells me what, no, your mama don't do that. Come on. When, when a person dies, and, and, and I've, got, I've got some other verses I can take you here to, to show you the truth of that. <clears throat> but uh, I, actually, I don't think I wrote those down. But, uh, you know, when, when a person dies in Luke 16, right, the rich man died and he went to hell and Lazarus died and he went to Abraham's bosom and, and the rich man saying, send Lazarus over here. And, 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 and the Lord said, no, uh, uh, Father Abraham said, no, there's a great gulf fixed between you and them and, and he, them that over there can't come over here and you can't go over there. There's not any mixture. They're, they're, what, what belongs to God is God's. And there's no way that a witch is going to call you out of the safety and the protection of God's hand and to get you to come whisper and mutter and twerp in somebody's ear. Come on, are you listening to me? That, 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 that I'm not telling you, now here's the thing, I'm not telling you that spirits are not showing up and talking, but they're lying spirits, they're demonic spirits, and they're going to lead you to a path of destruction. Come on. It's just a fact. And so, guys, we've got to understand as the people of God, God has something better for us. I said he has something better for us. <clears throat> and we just, we don't need to be scared. So our place in the spiritual realm, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Look at this. 1, 3. Blessed be, straighten up here. Blessed, uh, <clears throat> blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has done what? He's done what? Where did he bless you? With, uh, with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. You are blessed, amen, in the spiritual realm, amen, in heavenly places. God has put his favor upon you. This is who you are. Why would you go to some dead dude, some dead chick, call, trying, to, trying to, to, to raise some dead person to talk to you when God says, I have already blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places or in the spiritual realm? I'm blessed. I have the mind of Christ. If I will seek his face, then wisdom will be given. Amen? 
You know, you, you can be deceived by demons. You start going to fortune tellers and witchcraft and, and, and uh, the seance. That's the word I've been looking for. We used to do seances. My sister and her girlfriends would get together on a slumber party. Yeah, they'd have them 45 records. I'm looking for some old folks in here. <laughs> Got them 45 records playing, and they're out there dancing. And then when Mama would go to bed, they'd get a candle, and they'd light it, and they'd sit in a circle, and they'd, they, would, they would do a seance, calling somebody's dead aunt to, well, guess what little brother did? I was, I was Aunt Gertie. I'd scratch on the window. I'd <laughs> yeah, I love to hear little girls scream. That was so much fun. But that's, that, that's what, it, it's like, you know, Christians that will celebrate this craziness is just as silly as that. You know, eh, 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 you know, we get all freaked out. When we understand the Word of God says, we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. This is what God has chosen for His people. Not to be led around by the nose. You see, led around by the nose, that is a reference to demonism. It's too deep for you. I'll get there at one point. Verse, let, 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 just keep reading. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be what? And without blame before him in love. How do we do that? By depending on the blood of Jesus, by living in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I can say no to sin and I can say yes to God. Amen. Next verse. Having predestined us. To adoption as sons by Jesus Christ himself according to the good pleasure. We've been adopted into the family of God. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> Everybody out there chasing demons and witches and, and, and vampires and all that stuff, they're out there living as fatherless children, as orphans. That's not what the church of the Lord Jesus is. We've been adopted into his own family. Come on, y'all. It's a bloody cross. Come on. <laughs> Last year... Uh, you know, there were some folks in our neighborhood, they had put out these big grotesque things, you know, to sell, it's just this big old, it's a big old demon looking thing and had tombstones. They're celebrating death. You've got to understand the origin of Halloween is the All Saints Day, which follows the, what is the, his, uh, the, the Spanish phrase? Or, say it again? Yeah, 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 Day of the Dead, that's it. And, and it, it's all about death. I said it's all about death. Contrast that with the word of the living God. We're all about life. I said we're all about life. But to, anyway, so they got tombstones. They got this about, a, about an eight-foot looking blow-up creature. And he's out there looking right in our window. And my wife just got enough of that. And she got her, she went to Home Depot and bought her a piece of plywood and some paint. And she, I forget, I forget what the message she painted was. Y'all probably remember that. She he painted it all up and we stuck, stuck it right in front of that big old demon looking across the street at us. It was a cross and we were celebrating the blood of Jesus. I ain't seen that. He ain't, here it is, what, the 13th, 14th? And he ain't up there yet. Come on. Come on. Come on, church. You see... We can't go run for the caves. The church has stayed under incognito for way too long. We got to come out and be loud and bold and proud. Are you hearing me? We got to understand who our God is. God has saved us and appointed us for this hour. We got to live as lights in a dark place. Come on. So we've been adopted, amen, as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. I don't want to lose my place here. Skip down to verse 17. The God of our Father, uh, the, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you, may give to who? Come on, lift your hand. Is he talking to you? This is what God wants to give you. What does it say? May give you the spirit of, say it out loud, of wisdom and what? In what? The knowledge of him. You see, Saul couldn't get an answer because he's living outside of the covenant. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we have been brought into the covenant. And because of that, because of the gospel of Jesus, our Father is God, and he wants to give us wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of him. Amen. What is that? Why do I need to know more about Jesus? 
Because what I know and understand about Jesus is what I know and understand about myself. Because I've been adopted. If he is a victor, I'm a victor. If he overcame death, hell, and the grave, I will overcome death, hell, and the grave. I have been adopted into his family. If Father said to him, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, guess what he says about me? Hallelujah to God. I'm hidden with Christ in God. He says the same of me and the same of you. Amen. No, I do not want to undo typing. <clears throat> Get to throwing this thing around. It gets crazy. So, Paul, Paul says that he prays that they receive spiritual wisdom and insight, revelation. But the most amazing verse, verses begin in verse 19. <clears throat> we'll go to the 23rd verse there. And what is the, oh, uh, there you go. No, 19, we'll go 19 through 23. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of heavenly places. Far above. What? Say that again. Far above, far above what? Well, he has seated Christ far above. Far above what? All, all, all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this age, but in that which is to come. Where is Jesus? He's the top of the spiritual food chain. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. I want you to see the position here. Which is his body, the fullness of him who feels all in all. So where is your position? You're seated with Christ in heavenly places far above. Say far above. far above. I want you to see that you already, as a born-again child of the Most High God, do not have to go to the necromancers and the fortune tellers and the witches to learn some dark arts. Let me no, your knowledge is superior to all of their knowledge. Your power is superior to all that they have. Your abilities and your position in the spiritual world is far above all principalities and powers that's what God has destined and designed for you as the believer that is our place in the food chain it is just crazy uh, <laughs> how many of y'all remember the Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> you know just it, it, the, the absurd becomes humorous right they <clears throat> had this swimming pool in Beverly Hills, and they call it the cement pond, <laughs> right? And instead of inside using all of the wonderful appliances that they have, they're outside cooking on fires, dipping water from the cement pond because they just don't have a concept of the status that they are living in now. <laughs> their, their minds are still in Tennessee somewhere, in Kentucky, in the backwoods, though they're living in the middle of Beverly Hills. They, they, they eat supper on the pool table. And, and they think that the cue sticks are what they use to pass the vittles around. The, it, it's absurd, and the absurdity makes it funny. Well, that's what when, when I think sometimes when we look at the church and the church is wringing its hands over, over demon possessed, we want to hide this stuff and, and we're just freaking out. And we don't, it's because we don't, we're like the Beverly Hillbillies. We don't understand. We're still living in this natural world when God has promoted us. Come on, to the top of the class. Come on, church. Who's afraid of some ghost? You know, I, <laughs> just, just a couple of stories to illustrate. So <clears throat> my daughter, uh, Tiffany, she, uh, we, she was in private school because we didn't believe in public school. And then when we started pastoring full-time, well, we, we had to go to public school. 
<laughs> and uh, you know, so we put her in school, and sure enough, like the second year, she's probably third, fourth grade. She comes home, and she's reading this book. That's an acclaimed book, um, and it's about a witch, right? And 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 all, I, I can't remember the, the the title of it, but it was very. You know, it, everybody in the world read it. It was just like we're, they're indoctrinating our kids. And what got me is that they used some scriptures out of the Psalms in it, right? But it's all about this girl, and she's engaging with this witch, and they're doing all this weird stuff. And, and man, I'm just, I've had it. I'm going to do something. Coming into Halloween, that's kind of when they launch all this stuff, right? And so Tiffany comes home with an assignment. She's got to write a paper on spending the day with a witch, I get home from church, and my wife is about to lose her mind. We got to do something. You got to go to that school. I'm like, no, wait a minute. I think I know what we can do. And so um, about a month or two before, now this is VHS days, right? The big old tapes about that big, right? VCR players, y'all remember that stuff? Well, Oprah Winfrey had, uh, she had some, uh, what do you call it? Channel. She had a channeler on there. A lady got demon-possessed on on live television, right? And she channeled the spirit of Mafu, had some uh, new age witches and crystal healers and all that stuff, a little panel discussion. And, and so, you know, I'd recorded it because I'm like, I'm going to use this in a Sunday school class at some point. And uh, so Tiffany comes home with this assignment, spending the day with a witch. And I'm like, mm, Lord, what are we going to do? I'm like, ah, I got it. So I set her down and I plugged it in and I showed her what a real witch looks like. Not some lady with a pointy hat and, and, you know, green teeth. But they're real people. They're, they're people. They're just giving themselves over to, demon, to demonism. And I showed her that. And then I took her to Galatians 5.19. Th throw that up there right quick. Now the works of the flesh are these, are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry oh look at there sorcery my goodness it's right there hatred contentious jealousies outbirths of wrath selfish ambitions dissensions heresies envies murders drunkenness reveries and the like i tell you beforehand just as i also told you in time past those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of god so i had tiffany read that and i showed her this the, these people are sorcerers they're they're witches they're they're outside of the covenant. I said, now, you write your paper about spending the day with the witch. The only twist is your witch gets saved. So she wrote a beautiful story about, about a, a, a friend of hers at school was a witch. And, and so uh, Tiffany told her about Galatians 5, 19, how the, <laughs> she wasn't going to make heaven. And how that, you know, Jesus came to save her and, and she got saved and went to Sunday school with her that next Sunday. Now, those, in those days, they, they got graded one to four and uh, Tiffany had never got a four. And uh, that paper, she got a four, which is the highest. And when you get a four, you get to read your paper to the entire class. My little girl got to preach the gospel to her entire fourth grade class. Come on, because we turned the tables on the devil. Are you hearing me? It, it, it's folks, you got to be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. But we have to understand the church has no place dabbling in this mess. Amen. So, so for years, me and my wife, we would, we just take, we'd leave because we got tired of kids knocking on our door. We, we, everybody in the neighborhood knows us. And it's like, we'd go to the ranch or we'd go here. We, we it was because we'd pull them out of school because, you know, if you, if you didn't dress up, well, then you were some weirdo. So we just took them out. We're going to, we're not going to put you through that stress. We're going to go have fun. So Halloween's always been a fun day for my family. Come on, we go camping. Exactly. Exactly right. So, guys, I'm, you know, and, and my family, oh, my Lord, they thought we had lost our mind. My mother, told, just before my mother got saved, y'all know my sweet mama, Holy Ghost-filled mama, prophetic mama. Well, back in them days, she was a drinker and a conniver, and, boy, she was rough. And she said, you've just taken this Christian thing a little too far. Hello? Can you take Jesus too far? Can we go too far with the gospel? Can we go too far, Pastor, with our obedience to him? No, no, no. Let's give glory to God wherever we are, whatever we do. 
Uh, last year it didn't happen, but I wanted to get me and my grandson out there with the guitars, and I wanted to play, just have a worship set while, while, while everybody's going up and down the street. Get them amplifiers going, play that bass, and just have church on the corner. Come on. Y'all want to do that this year? Come on, find me. We'll do it. <clears throat> Amen. All right. So when Christians celebrate necromancy, black magic, vampires, and etc., we are allowing demons to deceive people and are subjecting the land to the rule of the serpent. But what does the Holy Spirit say? He says, come out from among them, amen, and be separate. Let's celebrate the light. We're, ch we're not, uh, I love that verse. Paul says it, I didn't write that one down, in, uh, I think it's Timothy or to Timothy or the Thessalonians said, <clears throat> we have not been appointed to obtain wrath, but we've been appointed to obtain uh, salvation. We're, we're not, we're children of the day, not children of the night, light, not darkness. So guys, don't, don't let, don't let your, the pressure of the culture push you into this darkness stuff. You know, my dear friend, you know, that we, 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 we just have so many people that they just don't understand. They're not bad people. They just don't understand the truth of it. Now, <clears throat> myself, all right, we're early. Goodness. Oh, that ain't even right. Is it 615? <laughs> I was going to say, I got another hour to preach already. <laughs> there you go. Let me get on this. <clears throat> so uh, we, uh, as, as I've said, you know, I, I had visitations all my life. Uh, I call them visitations from from uh, we called them ghosts me and my sister we found out years later but you know we but we grew up but before we got saved uh you know we compared notes and like wow we had ghosts that was come visit us at our house right uh, from the time i was five years on old and upward i would have have these spirits would come in my room you could hear them walk across the carpet and i'd I'd roll up and pretend I was asleep, and they'd hover over my bed, and, and my ears would ring, just all, all this stuff. <laughs> Somebody can, else has had them same demons in there. Well, we called them ghosts because we didn't know no better. Wasn't raised in church. And, and you know, th th they never did anything malevolent until I got older, and, and then, then they started, you know, it got a little, because I'd been dabbling in this stuff and opening doors and giving them permission And the manifestations got bigger and bolder and, and, and began to turn really dark. And I didn't know what to do with this stuff. I, you know, I was scared. You know, not, not that they ever hurt me, but it was terrifying, right? Fear has torment. And so um, when I got born again, it, I, was, I was 20, and I never had another visitation until about three years later. And uh, my wife is in, in Electra uh, visiting her grandfather, who is a, uh, a wheat farmer up there, a big, big farm. And I'm at home by myself, and I'm sound asleep. You know, nobody complained about my snoring. I'm getting it on. And uh, all of a sudden, I wake up, and I hear the... And my ears start ringing. And just like that little five-year-old boy, just... I pretend, I'm like, and then it hit me. I'm like, hold on. Wait a minute. I'm not a five-year-old boy. I'm a six-foot-three. Back then, 175 pounds. <laughs> Which, I ain't seen that in a long time. I, I'm a man of God. And I sat up in that bed, and I said, no, sir. And I turned them lights on, and I went in there. I didn't have no, we, we had a little uh, uh, oil that Tammy used to cook with. And I took that bottle. It wasn't anointing oil, but it was that night. Amen. And I began, I anointed every door and every window in that house, and I cast out, and I binded, and I loosed, and I screamed, and I prayed. And I, I'm amazed that the neighbors didn't call the cops, but they were probably hollering so loud they didn't hear me. They was always fighting. But, <clears throat> I mean, I, I, I dealt with that. And I, you know, when I got done, I put the tap, top back on that bottle, turned them lights on, and I slept like a baby the rest of the night. I have never to this day, to this moment, ever had another visitation. You see, the enemy, he's a, he's a conniver. He will trick you. He will deceive you. But when you understand who you are, 
When you understand what God has done inside of you, he's made you to be the head and not the tail. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places far above all that mess. You got no place. Now, what I didn't know, at the because that was before the day of cell phones, or we, we didn't even have pagers back then. At the same time, 500 miles away, my wife wakes up. And she hears that her, her grandfather, had, is, they're way outside of town on his big farm. She hears a, a car come down the, drive, the gravel driveway. She hears a door open and shut. And the enemy whispered, they're going to kill all of you. Of course, my wife, being a much more holy person than I am, she said, devil, you are a liar. I'm going to lie down in peace and safety. I'm not going to see when he comes. She just rolled over and went back to sleep. All the time, I'm in there screaming and hollering, shouting and binding and loosing. <clears throat> but you see that because we're one, the enemy's going to look for a door to come in. The church cannot open doors. We're here to shut doors to the devil and to open doors to the heavens. We're here to be a portal for the living God so that the power of the Holy Spirit can rest upon this people and rest upon this place. Amen. We are the people of God. We are not the tail. We are not to be led about by this dark stuff. We're to live as children of the light. That's what he saved you for. So I want to encourage you. Amen. Don't, don't get all, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, everybody's going to hell, even though they may be. If they are, you need to pray for them and witness to them. But, but, but just look for opportunities to be lights in a dark place. A lot of, this is a time when darkness is going to try to stick its ugly head up. I am so glad that the people in my neighborhood hadn't started putting that mess up. Now, I don't, I, they probably will. They may not. They, that may be that sign my wife put up last year, got them all under conviction. Amen. And they're just not going to do it. I thank God if that, if that's what it is, but here's the deal. We've got to be bold. We got to speak. We've got to allow the presence of the Holy spirit to live through us in a tangible way. Be lights in a dark place. Amen. Stand to your feet with me, if you will, tonight. Glory to God. <clears throat> I want you to do this. How many of you have somebody uh, in your family or maybe friends at work that you know they're, they're captivated by, by, by demon spirits? You, you know that, that they can't, they're not saved because the enemy has a hold on their life. How many of you know somebody? I've got, I've got family members. Amen. Let's do this tonight. Guys, if you'll put some music on. I want you, let's get in, in prayer circles here tonight. And I want you to pray one for another. This is biblical, right? Pray one for another, excuse me, that you might be healed. I want you to pray, amen, that, that our family members and these people that are, are trapped in darkness will see the light. Amen. Wouldn't it be awesome to have a revival start on Halloween? Amen. Glory to God. Well, why don't we begin to ask and pray for that? God, show yourself strong in this season. Amen. Go ahead. Gather up there. Get, get, get around. Find some folks. Let's pray one for another. Amen. Don't let anybody be by themselves. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 